The Vietnam War was one of the deadliest wars of the 20th century and unfortunately claimed 1.3 million lives. However, in addition to being responsible for the tragic loss of life, the Vietnam War was also responsible for the development of some of the most iconic military watches of all time. What is going on everybody? Teddy Baldessar here. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at some of the most iconic watches to ever see military action during the Vietnam War. So this was a recommended video based on a comment on a previous video. So if you enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. And if you also want me to continue with videos of this nature, also leave comments down below. Love to see them as always. So guys, let's jump into the video. So starting out our list, we have a watch that was one of the first watches commissioned for U.S. soldiers during the war, the Bulova MIL W. 3818A. The watches were first issued in 1958 and were mostly seen on the wrists of special forces and green berets. The watches featured many of the commonly seen developments of military watches of prior eras. The 12 and 24 hour markings on the watch had a very large crown and a set of cathedral hands. The watch had a 34 millimeter case and sported a Bulova 10BNCH movement, making this one of the most trusted watches of US troops during the war until they were replaced in 1962 as a result of the U.S. military changing the testing standards for their commissioned watches. Despite Bulova submitting another watch in order to adapt to the change, the contract was awarded to Benrus instead. And as a result of this, we have our next watch on the list, the Benrus D2U2AP. Upon glancing at this watch, you probably are rushed with thoughts that this watch looks familiar. And that is not by accident, as it is one of the most iconic military watch designs ever produced and really transformed the future designs of military watches going forward. As you'll see with a lot of modern Hamiltons, marathons, and even a lot of Timex that pay homage to this style. The watch features clean white hands and hour markers to match, both 12 and 24 hour markers and triangular loom dots on the dial. The watch features a Benrus caliber DR2F2. It's a hand wound 17 joule movement based on an ETA caliber 2370. And after Benrus was approved by the Department of Defense for meeting the new standards that they were requesting of watches to be commissioned, these watches became ubiquitous on the wrist of many US troops from their commission date in 1964 to 1969. Next, we have a watch that was worn on the wrist of troops of many of the powers involved in the war, the Seiko 6105. So the Seiko 6105 was a watch made by the iconic Japanese watch manufacturer that was mass produced for those outside of the military, for many scuba divers and people of that nature. However, given its functionality and durability with its cushion case design, many soldiers during the Vietnam War picked one of these up as they were readily available through throughout Asia. The watches featured several different versions, all sporting 150 meters of water resistance and a rather large case size for the time at 44 millimeters. The watches remained an important part of the war and in Seiko's history, making way for new developments in their diver lineup going forward following the creation of this back in 1968. In addition, these watches made a big silver screen appearance when Martin Sheen sported one in the Vietnam War movie, Apocalypse Now. And I've done a whole video actually about this watch and how it had a huge effect on the f new watches that Seiko were developing throughout the 70s. So there was actually a letter sent by a scuba diver to Seiko in response to this watch. If you wanna learn how that letter changed the trajectory of Seiko forever, I will link to that video in the description down below. So from one diver watch to another, we have one of the most overlooked icons of all time that bear the wrist of many soldiers during the war, the Zodiac Seawolf. When thinking about two of the most iconic diver watches ever introduced, the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms and the Rolex Submariner are often the two top ones that come to mind. In 1953, Zodiac released their Zodiac Seawolf watch that turned heads at the Basel Watch Fair. This iconic yet unfortunately forgotten watch continued to turn heads during the war as well, catching the attention of many soldiers who wore them in combat, primarily naval underwater demolition teams and special forces. Given their watch's impressive 650 feet of water resistance, the watches came in as well with a 35 millimeter case and became readily available at PXs, making them a commonly used watch during the war. So now last up, we arguably have one of the most iconic watches of this era. So back in the 1950s, pilots were complaining 
warning of the inability of poor timekeeping during long transatlantic flights, as there was an increasing demand to create a watch that could track multiple time zones. The original answer to these demands was not actually met by the Rolex GMT Master like many assume when it was released back in 1954, but with the Glycine Airman in 1953. The watch did not feature a GMT complication like the GMT Master, however these watches were the first watches to ever be able to track two different time zones simultaneously thanks to its 24 hour dial and bezel. Fast forward to the Vietnam War, the Glycine Airman was another popular choice amongst US pilots. However, Glycine created a modified version of the original Airman containing a movement with only 17 joules, an A-Schlid 1903 movement, and the watch was the Glycine Airman Special. The watch features a 36 millimeter case and 100 meters of water resistance. Considering this water resistance and its ability to track multiple time zones, there's no doubt why this is the watch that has really become the first watch that comes to mind when someone is considering the most iconic watches of the Vietnam War. So guys, those are just some of the watches that were used during the Vietnam War, and I thought this was really cool because at the core, watches are tools. And if I had to pick my favorite here, I think I'd pick either the Glycine Airman or the Zodiac Seawolf. But those are just my choices. What are your choices down below? I'd love to see them in the comments. And if you like this video, guys, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell icon. That'll be a great indicator of whether you want me to continue this series leave comments about that down below. And that also doing all those things really help out the channel and allowing us to grow within YouTube's algorithm. And finally, check out my Instagram, also our Patreon. If you want to be entered to win the watch giveaway, fill out the form down below, as well as follow me on Instagram so you can see the announcement of the winner. So we're gonna be giving away a Seiko SNK803 this month. And then finally, the Patreon, like I mentioned just a second ago, if you wanna support this new generation of watch lovers that we're trying to foster up on this channel, be sure to go there. Any support there would be greatly appreciated. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.